This week on Bike Racing Without Mercy, we had a two-parter following a family holiday in the Balearics in early August. Here, in part one, I break away from the family for a morning with Simon from Velo Club Ibiza in order to explore the incredible rolling terrain and to try my hand at one of Ibiza's steeper KOMs, the climb out of Calador, with a 9% average gradient and some nasty ramps up to 16%. And the question is, does virtual world fitness translate into real world capability? Welcome to Bike Racing Without Mercy! From Ibiza! The ride starts with a quick canter past Playa Dembosa, where stoically we sweep past the signs designed to entice us into Ibiza's nightclubs en route to the hillier asphalt. Now, because I'm not blessed with half decent map reading skills, I enlisted the help of Simon, owner of Velo Club Ibiza, and one jaw-droppingly beautiful hand-built Vestica bike to take me on a three-hour tour of the island. Now Simon's a Brit, but he's been living on the island the last six years with his family and knows Ibiza like the back of his hand and he's one cool cat. And he runs a very tight ship indeed, supplying me with a really tidy or bare carbon road bike for the trip. As you'll see, Ibiza is crammed full of beautiful rolling hilly terrain and lovely smooth tarmac. It's definitely one for the rulers. But correctly, sensing that my bike handling skills are, shall we say, emerging, Simon started us off with a couple of nice easy ascents, followed by some sweeping but slow descents, allowing me to rediscover how to use the front brake. end of the second climb which commenced with a really nice three to four percent gradient gradually building to six percent and that all enabled a nice sustained high cadence and smooth delivery of power. Having feasted on some beautiful undulating countryside after the second climb we then undertake a straight non-technical fortunately for me but very steep descent towards Calador Hall. Apologies for the pronunciation where you can see the famous island rock of Esvedra rising imperiously out of the Mediterranean. Once again, my descending is pedestrian, certainly no airy tuck for me, and as a newbie to cycling outdoors, my personal preference and abilities are more focused on the more stately, but of course uncomfortable process of ascending. And unlike the virtual world, 70 kmh is definitely not on the cards. My level of concern rising as I observe how steep some of the ramps are and pass another cyclist who has needed to stop on the way back up, I personally resolve that for my own climb I'm going to record it in full on the GoPro to provide added motivation not to grind to a halt myself. Calador, I think that's better pronunciation this time, is a small but iconic beach overlooked by the mysterious island rock of Esvedra. And my meticulous research confirms that Esvedra is not simply a glorified rock sticking out of the Mediterranean. It is said that the island is a very great source of energy to the extent that legend has it that between Alicante, Mallorca and Esvedra there is the Triangle of Silence where sailors and aeroplanes have noticed strange energies that have affected their equipment and even claim to have seen strange lights associated with UFOs. Either way, it is one hell of a pretty beach. Idyllic though this is, unfortunately it isn't a cafe stop. It's an opportunity for me to ascend the very steep climb I just came down. Let's see how I go.
keep it measured here. As per the data on the screen now, Strava advises that whilst the climb, Cami de Calador, is a mere 2.3 kilometres, it's very steep, averaging 9% gradient, with ramps at 15%, then 16%, followed by 13%. Now the clock for the KOM starts at the 20 kmh sign, and of course not much chance of me exceeding that on the way up. The initial 15 degree ramp is very nasty indeed, and my heart rate and breathing rise very rapidly. Progress feels glacial as I teeter upwards, and of course, I'm out of the saddle. Very steep. Yeah, that was nasty. That was the first of the steep inclines. Spin to win. About four minutes into the climb, Simon provides some welcome encouragement and my resolve strengthens. And whilst I've got no data, you can certainly hear from my breathing that the situation is generally challenging. I mean, if it was autumn, I'd be inhaling leaves from all around. And it certainly doesn't feel like the island of Isvedra is bestowing any of its mystical energy on me. As I continue to slog on up the climb, I lose any sense of perspective as to how far from the top I am, and as a result I overshoot. Later I find out that the KOM ends at the sign for the left hand bend, and my time is 11 minutes 2 seconds, which is 60 seconds shy of a top 20 time on the Strava leaderboard. So all in all, pretty decent. I then cruise two thirds of the way back down the climb to rejoin Simon and in line astern we take in the scenery en route to the fourth climb, spinning a nice low gear as we pass through Calabadella, a very fine looking beach town but nowhere near as achingly pretty as Calador.
Having passed through Cala Vidalia, we immediately commence the fourth main climb. It measures 6.4 kilometers with lovely single digit gradients that encourage even cadence and sweet spot power. So we head upwards and inwards towards San Joseph de Satalia. Feast your eyes on the scenery. Well, I really enjoyed my three hour excursion around Ibiza. It was lovely to explore a little bit and the route that Simon from Velo Club took me on was super cool. Lovely undulating terrain, beautiful tarmac and the climbs, they were pretty steep um, but never really more than 10 minutes and the steepest one averaged about 11% and that's the one I filmed in totality um, but it did have some 22% kind of um, steps and really that's why I do Swift. It gives me the fitness to enjoy hiring a bike and getting out in the sun and just enjoy riding. So, awesome. And also, I managed to score this t-shirt from Simon. My size, my colour, love it. And I'll be coming to a gym near you soon. Cheers. <laughs>